what are we doing today? Today we are making the upper helm panel and uh, I've got just got done marking up the uh, locations of the switches and how I want it laid out. I might change this part around just a little bit. Uh, but this was the old upper helm panel and uh, unbelievably it actually still worked, most of it anyways. Um, but I've got all new gauges um, in the box and we're going to cut this out. So the way that I'm going to do this now is I, I bought this, which is, you know, that panel right there was just out in the, in the sun and it had a fabric cover on it. Um, and the previous owner a lot of times did not put the fabric cover on it. So this was just open to the rain and, and uh, the sun. Uh, under a bimini of course but it just took a beating on it so I've got new gauges I don't want to keep them open to the sun and rain um, so I've got this uh, a marine uh, cover here and the way it's gonna work I've got it taken off the hinge right now um, I cut out the upper helm and I guess I'll show that to you I did bring it home so this was the upper helm uh, piece right here and obviously this piece went into there. Let me back up on this a little bit. This piece went into that fiberglass piece in the upper helm. And uh, so what I did is I just cut this out right here basically to match uh, this piece, the inner part here. Um, and then this is gonna go down into the helm fiberglass area. And then this, will get put on and then when I want it, it uh, to have access to the new gauges <clears throat> start switches and everything else I just open this and when I'm done with it I'll close this and latch it and it's got it's gasketed uh, so it should you know keep the rain and the the sun off it, it won't be perfectly waterproof of course because uh, you know dew and things like that get in there and I'll probably put like a little drain port somewhere in there because it's never perfectly waterproof you get drips and things like that but it'll be infinitely better than what this was going through so it was pure heck so let me just stop this and I'm gonna configure a couple things and I'll show you how it's actually gonna be be back in a second okay so the uh, upper a marine uh, waterproof compartment there uh, is gonna be part of the upper helm and imagine this is you know, it was actually a very thick upper helm, about one inch thick. And just by chance, the thickness of, of this uh, piece right here is about one inch. So as you can see, let me see if I can do this with one hand. Just lucked out that that is almost exactly one inch. So when I cut this hole right here, this will now slip down inside of the upper helm fiberglass and it's going to fall right down on top of this and when I tie these all together because there'll be there's fiberglass through here and I will be able to put these screws all the way in uh, through the fiberglass on the edge and into this bottom panel so it should look just about like this when everything's lined up with all those gauges in there and it should be secured with no gap right down in there because just by chance that that's one inch and this is one inch um, if I have to do a little bit of sanding or whatever to make sure that there's no appreciable or, or um, you know gap that's bothersome to me then I will do a little bit of sanding and fitting but generally speaking it should fit nearly perfect um, so that's it I'm gonna take this over to the uh, drill press get set up and start drilling these out. I'll start with the hardest one, which is the biggest one. So if I screw it up, I won't have tons of time in these smaller ones, which are very easy.
I've got center points in there marked. So as long as I hit the bit on the center point, it should be all right. So I'm just going to test it and see how I like it. Yeah, it's good enough. See if you can see that. Yeah, it's all pretty symmetrical to me. The room we need. Perfect. Okay. Very good. All right. All right. Got the rest of the holes drilled. I'm just going to take the tape off now, deburr each hole, and slide all the gauges in and switches in and see if I'm happy with it all right so essentially that is what it's gonna look like something like that so here's the panel of course but when it's stuck under the helm and then this goes on top sandwiched underneath that's what it will look like I've got the uh, Garmin stereo control is going to go right there so I think that came out okay so I'm here at Tarpon Springs that's Duckworth shipbuilding over there that's Ancloat River over there and Tarpon Springs will be right over that area over there so we are working on the panel and I got it all hooked up. Half of that wiring has to come out. The only thing I use so far is this plug and it's working. So the wiring must be good because it's feeding through the lower helm and I'm getting 13.3 volts up here, which is pretty good. Uh, the oil pressure is working. Temperature hasn't come up but I might need to change the sensor. I have the sensor that belongs to this gauge, but so far the temperature has not come up. Um, the sensor that's in the motor right now is for the old gauges. They may not be the same uh, ohms. Uh, the oil pressure is, is also the same uh, sender that was in, in the uh, engine before, but it seems to be working with this, uh, this system, although I don't know how accurate it is. I'm, I'm changing both, both of these senders for these gauges. Um, I still got to hook the rudder up. That's just a plug. The start and the stop both work. The key switch works. The lights work. And the horn works. These are two spares. And the uh, buzzer works. So actually everything works as it should. Let me see if I can give it a little throttle. A little increase in oil pressure. And the temperature, water temperature has not come up again, so we'll see what happens. But uh, so, engine stop from up here. No problem. Oil pressure goes to zero. Buzzer works. Everything seems to be working just fine. Just about every single wire back here is coming out. I don't think anything is used up there anymore. So <laughs> I don't know what all these are for. There's one wire that I need to use and that's for the rudder angle and it's actually a little four wire harness. Um, other than that and including all the um, uh, there's propane lines up here. Um, copper propane lines so um, 
all in all not bad pretty happy with it so as you can see everything fits everything works stop let's go ahead and kill it shut the panel off up here you can hear the panel beeping down there and there it sits and I got some cleanup to do and everything but let me go shut everything down So one thing I did discover is the way that I wired it. I wired it so that this key has to be on before you can use the upper helm. So a lot of the wiring uh, and power goes through this key and then you have to turn the upper key on for it to get the upper helm. But that also means that these gauges don't get power until the upper key is on. So if you notice when I came up here, this still read 40 PSI. It doesn't have 40 PSI. What it is, is that when I turn off the upper helm, now I have half the value on the ohms range because this, these gauges are dual, uh, dual panel gauges. So the, it's different than a single panel. Uh, so essentially, and I may have to reconfigure this because I didn't even think about that or... Um, or there maybe there's a way around it or something I don't know but uh, so I while I'm operating the if I'm operating the lower helm the upper key has to be on but it almost doesn't matter what, what I might do is I might just leave the upper key on because it's essentially a switch anyways and I only wanted a switch up there in case there was some major malfunction in the upper helm like a short or something that was causing the whole system to, to go away or to, to not be functional in some way so that upper key is really just a disconnect um, so if I treat it as such and I just leave that upper key in the on position uh, I'll have to make sure there's no draws on there I don't believe there is um, but then I can just use this lower helm key come in here turn this key on and then I'm operational at both upper and lower helms so we'll see I still got a little bit of troubleshooting and uh, configuration to do So we'll see. Let me just let's just see here. Yeah, see. So let's let's do an experiment. I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna turn that key on and see if this gauge starts reading right. This gauge is reading right. Let's go downstairs. Let's see what happens if we shut everything from the downstairs. <clears throat> okay, so that's correct. So now this gauge is reading right. And uh, if I shut this off now. goes to zero so that's what it is so now what I want to do and the upper alarm should be coming on everything should be reading right I want to shut this down and leave the upper one on so I have no residual power down here that's a separate circuit just for the horn let's see what's going on up there I don't want there to be any kind of power draw up here All the gauges are off, lights are off, warnings off. Let's test this. Nothing, nothing. Horn's gonna sound because again, that's a separate thing. So, looks like this whole panel is dead and as it should be. All right, when I hook this up, I'm gonna make sure I hook it up through this key switch uh, or off this voltmeter. I'm not sure just so that make sure that the entire panel is dead when this key switch is left on so I'm okay with that essentially I will leave this I'll turn it off for now until I'm done troubleshooting and checking everything but I'm happy with it so 
Just got to do some tests and some things. Make sure there's no surprises anywhere. Somebody coming in on the uncloaked. Big sea ray.